Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Say hi, Terry. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and TV, and usually TV. <laughs> <laughs> we have a wide range. Yes, but we do that because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. So this week we are going to get into the latest episode in our West Wing Watch and yeah. Terry's challenge for me last week, which was NCIS. But first, Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Several so, hours worth so of So much Dancing with, with the Stars. stars. <laughs> Four hours in one week and as yes. exhausted as... Those poor contestants must be to have had to learn two dances this early in the thing. So are we exhausted by watching so much so early in the thing? Yeah, and it made me laugh that Monday night's theme was ballroom. It was ballroom <laughs> night on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> right. Amazing. That is perhaps indicative of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't every night ballroom night? But, you know, it's sort of sad that this is such a great group and they're doubling up so early and they're being kind of harsh on them in judging. And I wish I had a little bit of time to just let them all have fun being there before they had to start sending mm -hmm. people home. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess it's 13 people and the number of weeks they had, they had to job. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to miss Barbara. And yeah, no. Or Debbie, honestly. She didn't make a particularly yeah. good impression. No, no. And I mean, I guess I'm sure she still has a lot of fans and I'm sure that yeah. her, her fan base does kind of overlap with the Dancing with the Stars yeah. audience, but mm -hmm. it just wasn't, it wasn't yeah. enough. And there's so her. many other good, fun people. Yes. That are having a good time. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So it's too bad, but I feel bad for Alan, but... Alan yeah, and Keo. And Keo, my gosh, like he cannot catch a break. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in a in a season where there were more obvious train wrecks, Debbie would have stuck around to mid season. Uh -huh. She just just there wasn't that much, you know. Right. Dead there wasn't weight. much room. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, but there's a lot more, you know, like when I was voting, I was like, well, I want to give that person a vote and I want to yeah, give that person a vote. Yeah. And I felt like I was really spreading them up pretty thin. I <laughs> so. know. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. I was I was doing that as well. Like Frankie t was <laughs> so much better. Frankie had a ridiculously good night tonight. Oh, this yeah. is we're, we're recording this on Tuesday. And it's he wasn't better than Lindsay and Jordan. But, no. you know, he gets extra points for attitude. I thought right. he was going to be a stiff, and he is really turning out to be such a fun guy. Yeah. And he's so into it. It's so cute and endearing. It is. It is. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's what got me to throw him a vote. Um, and and also Lindsay, the violin Lindsay. Lindsay the, with an e. the, the star Lindsay. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, it looked challenging. It looked, the, especially the, the salsa on, on Tuesday. The, the yeah. other one was the, uh, the butterfly, the butterfly, which I was like, get out of that dumb cocoon. Like that was a, <laughs> yes, that wasted a lot of time. Dance was great. That was dumb. Yeah. But the, but the salsa, I thought it, it looked hard and I thought she looked like she did a good job and, and also it more importantly, like she was having a good time. Yeah, I thought it was maybe a little bit too hard because there were a number of places where I, it looked to me like she was struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's week two. Right. <laughs> really, she, give her some easier steps, Help Mark. Help her out, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it worked out fine for them score-wise, but it, it was less enjoyable to me because it looked like a few times she was going, oh my God, what do I do now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, but everybody seemed to like it, so. It's, uh, you know, I'm really, I think that, that Drew and Frankie are going to get the entertainer and enthusiasm and good attitude awards because they're both having fun with it yeah although uh, it, neither drew, of them is gonna win but oh boy <laughs> drew is just you know the tan the spray tan didn't <laughs> help like the awkward <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like i 
on Monday after his, I wrote down gangly, and then Len used that exact word. Yes, well. <laughs> so me and Len, you know, we're <laughs> yeah. in tune. <laughs> yes, nothing, nothing he can do about that. But no. uh, you know, he's he's going for it. Yeah, and um, everybody, I think I was afraid that Sasha's. I I thought Sasha's thing this week of talking about her the problems that she had had. Normally I don't like that. This one I thought was good and I was afraid it was going to be like a week too, an episode too late. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Maybe she, because the first two episodes she just seemed kind of bland. Right. And she, she came out of it much more this time. Both she in terms did. of her package and her dance. And I thought, well, this is going to be really sad if that, the if first that's two, it for her. The first yeah. two non-spectacular weeks sent her home. But right. she hang on. She looked much more confident. She really did. On Tuesday than she yeah. had the previous two times, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And so. Victoria, I still really like. I thought yeah. that on Monday when they did the tango, uh-huh. it was it really showcased her instead mm-hmm. of Val, <laughs> you know, which could yes. happen sometimes. Yeah. And then uh, the second day when they did the rumba, Mm-hmm. And I liked how it was a little. It was more romantic than yeah, than yeah. all sexy. Which <laughs> ca- coming right after Nikki and Artem, which I was like, okay, yeah. now we're back to the whole Jana and Gleb. Like someone's yeah. gonna take a shower on stage again. <laughs> so yeah, it was sweet. Possibly yeah. not sufficiently rumba like, but sweet. Yeah. These dances, these Latin dances, were short. They were which short. Is completely understandable because. You've making them do two dances in two days. I, you know, I think it's okay to cut off the second one a little bit, mm-hmm. but uh, but a lot, but some of the it was really noticeable that they got in and out of it yeah. very fast, right? But uh, it's still uh, Nick is still kind of dull, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I thought that especially in the in the tango. It was more of like a blank stare than a tango <laughs> yeah, face. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of expressiveness, though, Peta looked really ticked a few times there. I think she was mm-hmm. mad about the score and she was mad about being in the final, you know, the two. The bottom two. The yeah, bottom the, two. She was allegedly. Looking, she was looking daggers at somebody through that whole little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. But uh, I don't think they're in any immediate danger, but... Definitely, I think Vanessa's got more going for her than her husband yes. for this sort of competition. She's yeah. very spirited and cute, and uh, she and Max seem to get along well. Yeah, and I liked their salsa. I thought mm-hmm. it was, I liked that, you know, she wasn't wearing a dress cut up to her navel. And <laughs> yeah. she, had, she had those, like, fun, like, pants on, and um, I thought it was... It was a good salsa. I mean, yeah. as far as I can tell, which is not very far, but still, <laughs> That's right. I liked it. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else we haven't talked about, because there's just so many people still. It's like well, kept... we didn't talk too much about um, Jordan. I mean, he just, oh, yeah. he just is like on a whole different level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really is. He's very good. And he's he seems to be very, you know, has a good personality. Maybe mm-hmm. a little, a little smooth but you know i feel like he's been doing this since he was five you know he's he's like a lot of disney kids he's he's done this stuff a lot and so it just comes out very smoothly and sometimes that can count against him eventually but at least he's not saying as terrell did i think very highly of myself yeah no he's (laughs) he's no yeah yeah i don't know how long terrell's gonna last but he's not doing he's not He's, yeah, you know, the funny thing is his packages, he seems like such a, he doesn't come off very well. He comes no. up as, as really full of himself. But like to, uh, on the Latin night, when he was there getting the scores, he was speaking very nicely. He was very sweet. He was saying very nice things about Cheryl. Right. Uh, he seemed really, you know, where's that guy? Why right. haven't I seen that exactly. guy before? Can we see him a little more? So a lot of it is the way they cut stuff together. You mm-hmm. never really know what somebody is like based on that right so i'm going to give him a little rope based on the fact that when he was a little more spontaneously yes not being cut into a package he seemed much more modest and nice 
Yes, uh, true. I, I've been really amused at how every time they introduce Jordan now, it's all about Hamilton. Because mm-hmm. beforehand, before the show started, it seemed to be they were going to gonna push Greece that he was in Greece Live. Right. That seemed to be top on all the promotional stuff about him for the show. And I was like, they didn't even mention Hamilton, like above the fold on his bio. Mm-hmm. And now every week it's Broadway's Hamilton. Okay. Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> one of the producers, it's at the Pantage just now, so one of the producers went and caught it and said, hey. Hey, you guys. This is something. <laughs> All the kids this, are talking about this it. This might go somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's hook into that. Maybe maybe they figure if they if they uh, mention it enough, they'll get free tickets or something. Yeah. Well, good luck to them. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think he's going to be around for a while. It was funny when uh, Len was talking about the Cuban heels and how it did his, his feet were doing wrong or something like that. I noticed the feet. But I thought, Ooh. wow, that looks really dancerly. See, he's really talented. He's got the feet the right way. And it turns out the feet were the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> looked sharp, I thought. Right. But, uh, yeah, but he's cute. And he's got a good partner. She'll bring out the goofy side of him a little bit. Yes. Yes. It is good. Yeah. yeah. So. So that there was it goes. a busy week. On yeah. Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Very busy. Next week, we will only Just have one episode next one week. One episode. <laughs> <laughs> Messes my week all up when there's two. I know. Exactly. Uh, Monday so, only. Well, shall we move on then yes. to, speaking of drama and excitement, Aww. the West Wing. The, CJ can't have nice things. I know. Season three finale, Posse... Call me Tatis? How do you, I don't know how you say that, but <laughs> the one uh, congressman said it in the show. Yeah, you should have and I, rewind that I a couple think times. Fitz said it. Yes, I, I think, think it was in the mentioned a couple of times, room. but but yeah. So <laughs> I'm glad it's anyway. your turn with the script that you had to say it. <laughs> that I had to say it. <laughs> um, this is the one uh, that we were wait. I was not listening to the Mark Harmon <laughs> interview for yeah. it because there was a giant spoiler. And yeah. when that happened, I screamed on the trend. Because <laughs> I did not very see it sad. coming, huh? No, because I am dumb that way. I never see that kind <laughs> the of thing that, coming. That he went on from this the very next season to be in a show he's been on in 15, for 15 years. Didn't suggest yeah, that no, he wasn't going to be back. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that far ahead. <laughs> He could have been, you know, called away to something else, and yeah, they put their relationship on hold. He could have given her another goldfish to go with, uh, yeah, go with Danny's. Damn. You know, she could have a bowl of goldfish, <laughs> a from- whole collection <laughs> from guys that the show just would not let stick around. Right. Well, Danny's coming back, if I remember correctly. Right. At some mm. point. So yeah. Anyway, but yeah. So when when <sighs> his character. Aww. Got spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Shot in a random act of violence that was <sighs> very sad because that was very sad. They were just about to get together, but now yes, CJ can't yes, have nice they things. Kiss. But she it can't. it was interesting in the in the West Wing Weekly podcast. So they had done a live recording with Aaron Sorkin and Allison yes. Janney and Melissa Fitzgerald Fitz. Patrick, right? Is that her name? Fitz. Melissa Fitz is what they call her, so let's just call it that. I know, but I think she has a longer name. <laughs> anyway. She does. I'm just saying we're hip like that. Right. But that's, we, we, we call know her, her by the so nickname. well. We call her by the nickname. Um, <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say is that Sorkin talked about how because Bartlett was wrestling with this decision yes. about um, ordering an assassination of this Kumari guy, that he had to, quote, pay for it in some way. Yes. And it turned out he had to pay, for, you know, yeah. CJ had except to that, actually pay. Yeah. <laughs> so that Simon was shot before the other thing happened. Seems like it should have been the uh, other yeah, way Yeah, but I think the point is, you know, it was all happening. Yeah. Around the same time, and yes, um, yes. So you know, I hadn't I hadn't thought about it that way until yeah he explained that does it. Makes certain certain dramatic sense, right? But I thought it was also funny how they were saying that everybody was so ticked off at him that they had to they had to right. kill him. <laughs> yes, but 
though. And uh, his, in his interview, uh, it was he had so many nice things to say about Alice and Janney. And then when she was on the live podcast, she was saying really nice things about him. So it's I enjoy it when everybody plays together nice. Yes, you know, everybody has good things to say. Absolutely. Yes. So. Um, it was a good episode of the West Wing Weekly because you got a lot of backstory and yes. insider info. Which right. Was nice. And, and was fun. of course, it was, you know, a dramatic episode. <laughs> it because, was. I mean, you had, in addition to the CJ and Simon thing, then you had the whole Kumari thing, then you had yes. the fallout of Josh and Amy. Um, yeah. Of him basically winning the the welfare reform thing that she had (laughs) stewed his phone over. Um, Yeah. And Lily Tomlin coming in. Lily Tomlin. That's what I was, if I was going to give you a hint last week, I would have said, we just, there's going to be somebody on we just saw on the Emmys. Yes. Well, that could have covered a lot of people. (laughs) Yes, that's true. I know. You would not have necessarily noted (laughs) until you saw her. But I hope it's not a spoiler to say she's going to be back. No, because they they also said that. Charlie said, right? Yes. And they said it in the the podcast. They explained how she, there was another scene with her that got bumped to the next episode, which is not until next season. That's right. Yes, I think. Charlie's determination to get her the job, which started in the episode before when she, he said, I know the lady, I know who it is. Mm-hmm. And then he's, even though neither she nor Bartlett wants this, he's just going to keep doing it until it works. Right. But then, but, but it is in this episode that he explains it's because she got fired because of him. Yes. And there's, there will be more details about right. that. But, uh, yeah, so that was fun that she was introduced. I couldn't remember if if the whole thing with her was in this episode or not. It was just the first disastrous <laughs> right. where she mentions alpaca farming and, gambling, and I thought of you. Professional gambling. <laughs> and gambling, yes. And she can't quite get her name straight. <laughs> not an auspicious debut. No. <laughs> Plus, which Bartlett's got a few other things on his mind. Yeah, he's, so he's not in the best gone that well. state of mind for this <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, that was fun. And when he goes to her house and she's like trying to brush him off and right. that's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know a nice dramatic you know why is he be doing this you know no, you don't yeah. understand right away obviously yeah. what the yeah what his thought process yes. is yes so. and this whole the whole kumari thing i that just seems if if you know in terms of drama you know it's not gonna now well, shouldn't spoil for the next season but Bartlett is not wrong in his hesitations and his concerns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. And things come. So it's just watching him have to make this decision. And really, there's no way not to do it. And yet, mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be repercussions. Sure. And, yeah. In addition and, to Simon Donovan. <laughs> in addition having, to Simon having Donovan. Having to be yes. the sacrificial more, lamb. More directly traceable. <laughs> Yes. Less less uh, conceit of the writer and more mm-hmm. directly. Mm-hmm. But eh, so that's kind of, but I like the way they, you know, follow through with it and put it all together. And and, and the whole, like, were the roses and, you know, like, oh, uh, yeah. drama, drama. I didn't remember. I remembered that there was a scene with him and Richie. And I remembered the line, crime boy, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I didn't remember Richie coming at him with that nasty talk. I didn't, that I didn't quite remember. Mm -hmm. So he's, you know, we can all feel free to hate him, but there's going to be a lot of Trump I, I, I on the next six or eight episodes. But, um, I, I didn't remember that part of it. So Mm -hmm. I thought he was more, you know, congenial. Yeah. That was pretty nasty. (laughs) Yes. 15 seconds. <laughs> he didn't mince any words. <laughs> that sounded like it could have been a recycled coins dig, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean... A couple of times he and Bartlett have gone at it. Yeah, and but, his whole thing, you know, like, how many ways are you going to find to call me, on, call me stupid, which I, I <laughs> thought he kind of had a point. I mean, it wasn't yeah. what... It wasn't Bartlett's point. It, it wasn't he, Bartlett's He was intention. really trying to say, like, hey, you know... This is like a big deal, and if 
I'm giving you some free advice here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but didn't come across that way. Kind of condescending. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that was a big old episode with a lot, yeah. a lot happening. Yeah. I liked that. I mean, the, the scene with, with Josh and Amy where he's basically cost her her job. And it's it's like, how do you stay together after this particular fight? Yeah. But I did like how when the phone call comes through about Simon – you know, they just the they switch out of that into you know this is something that's really important. You know, mm-hmm. life and death. Although, uh, although I wondered how Josh did Josh particularly know him? Exactly, I I was thinking the same thing. Like <laughs> it, would, it would have been more affecting if they'd had just like one passing scene in the White House where Josh thanks him for being at Roslyn, and then you know because Josh was shot there and all that. There's something, some connection between them based yes. on that. But there, there was not. Maybe it got cut or something. But yeah, so that was sort of like, I really liked, I really want to like this, this shift in their scene, but... You were taken out of it a little. How does Amy even know who he exactly. is? Exactly. <laughs> how does Amy know who he is? And <laughs> this guy we had for dinner last week got shot. Wait, how do you... What? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I had the same. That's what she sounded like, but it's like, I don't think she ever had a scene with him. I don't think she had ever met him. I don't think there's any... I, it doesn't seem like she and Josh are just having random com- conversations about the workplace right at the moment. No. If no. Josh is smart, he will never have a random conversation about the workplace with her ever, ever, ever again. Ever again, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that was unfortunate. Yeah. But uh, it did make me feel that, I guess, their relationship doesn't live or die based on the fact that True. she threw his phone in the stew and he <laughs> cost her her job. <laughs> yes. Well, and to be fair, he, she made it into this big fight. Yes. And she that's did. what cost her her job. And yes. she didn't have to do it that way. She did not. So. She asked for it, but still, you know, she, this is the sort of thing Josh does, right? She doesn't know this about him, that he's going to figure out a way to make it work. Mm-hmm. And probably at her expense yeah but i kind of feel like she did she she, you know i mean she they knew each other they've been both doing these jobs for a long time right she should know so anyway well sorry amy (laughs) so we're done with another season are you still enjoying it i am enjoying it very much yes i'm really glad that we're watching it and it's great to have the West Wing podcast, West Wing Weekly yes, podcast, it's very fun. Um, you know, because they just do a good job of having good guests and yes, they good do conversation. So, and it should be should be getting more interesting in the next season since Josh Molina joins the cast yeah. about episode six. Yes, I guess there'll be more insider tales at that point, mm-hmm. which should be fun. And uh, I really enjoyed. His debut in the show, the first couple of episodes, especially of his, are really good. Okay. It's his, as he's coming in and Rob Lowe is going out. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, at the end of season four, Sorkin goes out. So wow. that will be an interesting finale to be discussing. Yeah. Well, I am looking Old forward to it. Old season between here and there. Yeah. So yeah. we're, we're going to keep watching. We think we're not going to watch the first episode this coming week yeah um, a little bit unclear what the schedule is on the western weekly podcast so check our show notes because by the time we publish this we should know we will know um, right so let's move on now to our challenge round yeah and in this one simon donovan lives again <laughs> he does in the, he in lives for a very long time of leroy <laughs> jethro gibbs <laughs> <laughs> we watched uh, NCIS season six, episode four, called Heartland. And this is the one, for those who are familiar with NCIS, in which a crime occurs where the one of the victims is from Gibbs's hometown. And so he has to go back to his hometown, which he has not been to for a long time, and bring the team, who are just delighted to think that Gibbs even has a hometown. And they meet his father there, played by Ralph Waite. And solve a crime in which things are constantly bouncing back to Gibbs's past. There's flashbacks to him as a young man. And the people that he's investigating are people who he crossed in younger days. And so Mm -hmm. there's lots of of, uh, historical subtext for Gibbs, which, of course, all the rest of them are just delighted to 
discover and <laughs> and uh, celebrate. So talk a little bit about why um, why you chose this. Well, I wanted to, when I knew we were getting to this uh, arc of episodes with Mark Harmon uh, on the West Wing, I thought, you know, I watch NCIS. I really enjoy NCIS. Catherine has never watched it. I should find an episode of NCIS source to watch while Mark Harmon is on the West Wing. And I had kind of a hard time because I think I missed the first few seasons. There's one uh, female cast member that I don't remember seeing at all. And then she got killed off at some point and, and uh, Ziva came on who you, mm -hmm. the episode was in the episode that you watched. Right. So, I, you know, some of the episodes that were early would be good, except I don't think I watched them. And then some of the later ones, uh, there's a, Richard Schiff did a few episodes mm -hmm. and I thought I should get one of those. But it's like it's an arc of three or four very violent episodes. He's like a, a domestic terrorist and he's blowing things up everywhere. And it's like you can't just kind of jump into that. Mm -hmm. And most of the episodes in the arc, he's not. He's sort of like this silent person that they finally figure out who it is and track him down. So he's mostly in the later episodes where you had had to see the first episodes to understand. Right. But the first episodes don't have a minute. So I was a, did a lot of Googling of of good episodes of NCIS for newbies. And this is one of the ones that came up. Okay. So I thought it was a fairly good, I mean, it certainly benefits from knowing the characters a little better than you do and their relationships and the sort of workplace comedy aspect yeah. of these, these, uh, <laughs> the people who work for Gibbs and, uh, but I think it's, I think it stands alone fairly well. I think you can kind of get it. It's, yeah. It works better if you know he's has this long history of being this kind of stoic guy. And then he comes in, he's with his dad and his dad is, right. you know, tweaking him on everything. And his dad is... Is so folksy. He's yes. a, he actually played Pop Walton. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> same yeah. actor. Yeah. So this is his first episode as that character, but he, he recurs from time to time. And also oh, okay. the actor playing uh, young Gibbs is actually Mark Harmon's son. Oh, so. okay. So this is, this is a little Gibbs backstory in this one, how he got to where he got and why he is the way he is. I really enjoy NCIS as one of those multitasking shows that I can do work while I'm watching it. And mm -hmm. I also enjoy, you know, there's always a, a nice little mystery. And my husband and I watch it together. And we try to guess who did it. And then there's always a twist at the end. And if one of us gets the twist, we feel really smart. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's one of those, you can see if it's about 45 minutes, you know, there's going to be one more twist. What are we going to guess that yeah. it is? <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's fun to watch. It's you know it is what it is. But uh, how did you like it? Were you able to 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 drop into it? Okay. Yeah, I think I was. Yeah. I mean, as far as I yeah. can tell, <laughs> it, um, I I definitely picked up on some of that workplace like goofiness, yes. which was kind yes. of fun, and the you know this the stoic laconic character yeah. that he uh -huh. was, um, which was kind of you know fun to fun to yeah, watch different and, from uh, simon yeah definitely different mm -hmm. from simon um but enjoyable for yeah. sure and uh you know a, a like you said i think a great show that you can just drop in or yeah. you can watch when you're doing something else or whatever it is um, and that sounds like a diss but it's not i don't mean it that way it's like yeah. i need sh everybody needs shows like this you know for folding uh, right. folding your laundry i think is what they always say on extra hot great you know it's good for that mm -hmm. yeah i mean i can't <laughs> 15 years yeah. is a really long yeah. time for for any yeah. TV show every to, now and then they go on. into like a multi like I was saying with the one with Richard Schiff into a, like a multi thing episode thing with one big bad who you know takes up a lot mm -hmm. of time I don't like those as well I like my little I sit down somebody gets you killed like itself in the, somebody gets killed before the first commercial my husband and I even that right. we have a little thing because the opening scene you either know that either the person you're watching is going to get killed or they're going to find a dead body so we're like mm -hmm. so what do you think Gonna die? Gonna find his dead body? The, the, <laughs> is he the dead one? That's or right. The that's right. In this case, they the were either one. gonna get beat up and killed, or they were gonna find a dead body in the dumpster. One or the other. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, very satisfying. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Satisfying, fun to watch. Oh, well, so. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. So and to know yeah. that that Simon Donovan, at least in some form, lives on lives for on. a really long time. <laughs> 
life. <laughs> Indefinitely. <laughs> Indefinitely. It is still going strong. It's going to be around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, very good. So then it is my turn to challenge yes. you. And what I decided on was because last week we had watched the Emmys and John Lithgow won an Emmy for The Crown, which I have watched and you have not. So mm -hmm. we're going to rectify that here yes um with an episode so you know the crown is the story of queen elizabeth the second and mm -hmm. it starts when she's just um getting married and then you know very soon after that was when she actually um abruptly came to the throne because her father died so it, it's all about the, her relationships with her family and how they change uh, based on her suddenly becoming the queen. Uh-huh. And um, as well, it's about her relationship with the prime minister, Winston Churchill, who is uh -huh. played by one John Lithgow. Yes. So we will watch um, from season one, episode nine. It's nine mm -hmm. of, of ten. It's called Assassins. Uh -huh. And it is particularly Lithgow. <laughs> or Churchill, <laughs> Churchill heavy. Yeah. So you get a you get a good deal of of him, and uh, I don't think that you really need a lot of background. Okay. You know, I mean, just go into it. You know that there's there's Elizabeth, there's her husband, there's mm -hmm. Churchill is the prime minister. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you'll see. You'll see. <laughs> it's not fiction. You can pretty much pick up exactly where yeah. it is historically. I mean, if you feel the need, you can go on Wikipedia and read up <laughs> the summaries up until that point. <laughs> and you can even read the summary of the one that you're about to watch, and it won't. Okay. It won't spoil it. It won't spoil. So. <laughs> no. No spoilers for history. No, exactly. So that's what we're gonna do cool. for next week. Plus, of course, Dancing with the Stars, and possibly the next episode of the west wing um but check in on our show notes and, and if not one of us will have to watch something else to talk about <laughs> well or we can or talk read. about whatever the the west if they do oh, that's a true. podcast that's true without an episode they might so okay yeah yes something we'll All figure right. it out yes <laughs> it, it's it's our way of introducing dramatic tension right here there right you now. go <laughs> So that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Goodbye, everyone.